Good morning. Please join me in singing Immaculate Mary. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign down in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. As we begin our pilgrimage, we bring our petitions and prayers here to the altar to celebrate our opening Mass, asking Mary to bring them to the throne of her son, her son Jesus. We pray for the people that requested our prayers. We pray for those who are close to our heart. We pray for ourselves. May we always live in the way so we can give God glory. May our lives speak loud and clear that we belong to Jesus. May we live in the way to, to make his kingdom present, make his kingdom more visible. We continue to pray for our church for the renewal. We continue to pray for our world. May we once again be unafraid to put God in the center. May God's kingdom truly be present in our midst in a beautiful, visible way. For these intentions, we begin this Eucharist in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. And with you, And as we gather as one family to celebrate this Eucharist, to do so with reconciled hearts, we call upon God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty King and Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Fatima, grant, we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see the city? Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke, Now I am making the whole of creation new. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. You are the highest honor of our race. May you be blessed, my daughter, by God most high, beyond all women on earth. And may the Lord God be blessed, the creator of heaven and earth. You are the highest honor of our race. The trust you have shown shall not pass from the memories of men, but shall ever remind them of the power of God. You are the highest honor of our race. God grant you to be always held in honor and rewarded with blessings, since you did not consider your own life when our nation was brought to its knees. You are the highest honor of our race. Amen. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. During our life journey, we have learned so many important lessons from so many different sources. During our life journey, we have learned from our teachers and professors. We have learned from the sisters and deacons and priests. We have learned from different books and presentations and classes we attended and so forth and so on. And of course, the most important lessons we learned from our parents. It was our parents who taught us the most basic and the most important lessons of our life. Our parents who taught us how to walk and how to run, how to talk and how to think, how to love and how to forgive. Our parents taught us about the values and goals in life, how blessed we have to parents who cared and taught us all these beautiful lessons of our life journey. What is true about our earthly parents is also true about our heavenly parents, our spiritual mother Mary. She teaches us so many beautiful, important lessons on our spiritual life journey. Let's spend a few moments today looking at these spiritual lessons Mary teaches us her spiritual children. The first lesson, the most crucial maybe, is the lesson of humility. She was a very humble person. Here it was the angel, the archangel, appearing to Mary saying, Blessed are you among women. You are the greatest woman ever. And then whatever she said, whatever she did, was not about herself. She never said, look at me, how great am I? It was always about, look at the Lord, how great he is. It took so much, this beautiful virtue of humility for Mary, and she lived it from the very beginning to the very end, always pointing out to the Lord, always pointing to the source of her life, God, never to herself. She saw herself as the Lord saw her, humbly, humility. Without humility, somebody said, on the humility, there's no successful spiritual journey. Without humility, we will never enter God's kingdom. Without humility, we will never see ourselves as God sees us. It takes humility to develop all the other virtues. Only a humble person can forgive. Only a humble person can be merciful. Only a humble person can turn the other cheek. Only a humble person can pray for the enemies. Only a hum humble person can experience conversion. Only, only a humble person can love, and so forth and so on. Hmm? Yes, humility is a key to spiritual journey that unlocks the door to all spiritual virtues. As the pride opens the door to all the vices in person's life. Humility opens the door to all the virtues. Indeed, Mary taught us lesson to be a humble person. The second lesson Mary taught, also from the very beginning to the very end, a lesson of faith and trust. Imagine being in her shoes, a teenage girl, huh? and the angel appears says, you, Mary, will be the mother of God. And surprisingly, she says, fiat, yes. Let it be, let it be. And she lived her word to the very end. Once she said yes, trustfully and faithfully, she lived it yes, day in and day out, in easy days and difficult days, to the end. In a sense, we said the same fiat during our baptism, huh? 
when our parents brought us to the church to for baptism on our behalf, and we confirmed that fiat later under a confirmation, we said yes to God. Do we live it? As Mary did, day in and day out, her fiat, her yes, her trust, her, her faith. And the final lesson is the lesson of courage. Once again, from the very beginning, courageous is saying, Lord, whatever you have prepared for me, I say yes with courageously. In those years, of course, unmarried woman, teenager, found pregnant, it was death penalty by stoning, huh? To the very end, today's gospel reading. One of those powerful disciples escaped out of fear. Mary courageously remained standing at the foot of Jesus. Indeed, she was a woman of wonderful, amazing courage. These three lessons, Mary, our spiritual mother, teaches beautifully, directly, compassionately, joyfully. The lesson of humility, our yes, faithful yes, and the message of courage. If you want to have a beautiful spiritual journey, if you want to truly enter God's kingdom, these three lessons we need to embrace and put them into practice. We need to be humble. We need to be courageous. We need to, be, we need to live our faithfully our yes to God, our fear to God. How about lesson of this place, Fatima? Huh? Mary appeared here in 1917, so 105 years ago. What was the message of Mary, of the Lord through Mary to us? At least three, huh? Of course, we know about the secrets of Fatima. We know about the, uh, the miracle of the sun. We will hear more about this later from Pavel. We hear about all these wonderful things happening. But the messages, what are the messages of Mary? What did she appear to the church, us, to encourage us to embrace and to live? The first message, of course, the message of prayer. Huh? She said, pray, pray, especially the rosary. The rosary, huh? It's such a powerful reminder because in the world, also Catholic world, where so many people walked away from rosary, saying, oh, this is the old-fashioned. That was a prayer of my grandma and grandpa. Now we are modern world. So many, so many people put the, the rosary somewhere on the shelf, covered with dust. Mary says, pray this. This is a powerful, powerful weapon. Rosary can change the world. Rosary can sanctify the church. Rosary can change us. Well, first of all, why prayer is so important? Why should we pray? Mother Teresa, in one of her books, little books of paths of prayer, she said this, as the blood is to the body, prayer is to the soul. As the body dies without blood, soul withers without prayer. Once we stop praying, once we stop spending time with the Lord, once we stop listening and talking to Him, our spiritual journey, spiritual life begins to wither. 100% sure, if you talk to a Catholic or any Christian who left the church, uh, any one of them, it's always the same story. At some point in their life, they stopped praying. And because they stopped praying, their spiritual life withered and died. Why rosary? It's a beautiful meditation upon the events of the life of Jesus, Mary, and the early church. It's a meditation upon the scriptures. Huh? Everything in the rosary is based on the scriptures. By meditating upon, meditating upon these mysteries from the life of the church and life of Jesus, we meditate upon the scriptures make his scriptures alive. Mary here in Fatima said, pray the rosary and you will see incredible spiritual fruits in your life, in your families, your church, your communities. Do we do it? Huh? The second message that Mary here in Fatima said, repent, repent, repent. There was a message, repent. Is it easy to repent? What is repentance? Is it just words? Or is it a transformation of life? I remember years ago, I heard this story told by another priest. Uh, there was a gentleman who faced St. Peter 
uh, in heaven, but before he was allowed to get into the into the uh, to, into heaven, he was asked to go back to, hell, to to the earth and bring what's the most precious in God's eyes. Well, so he went back to the earth, and he met a missionary who who walked uh, miles and miles preaching the gospel. So he took some of the dust from his shoes, went back to heaven, showed it to Saint Peter. And St. Peter said, well, this dust is very precious. Somebody gave their life to preach the gospel, but this is not the most precious thing. So he went back to the earth and found something else and brought something else to heaven. St. Peter said, this is very precious as well, but not this, and so forth and so on and so on. Finally, the man was kind of discouraged and was sitting at the well somewhere. And he noticed there was the older gentleman riding the horse toward the well. He took some, some drink from the well and sat down. He looked very tired and very exhausted and very angry as well. And at some point, he saw a group of kids playing around. He looked at them, and something changed in him. This tiredness and anger disappeared, and he began to cry. The man took a, a few tears from the repentant man's eyes and brought those tears to heaven. And St. Peter said, yes. This is the most precious thing for the Lord, the tears of repentance, the tears of changing life. Jesus also said, huh? that the greatest joy in heaven when, every, when one person repents and changes his or her life, it will bring great joy to God's heart. He and Fatima man, reminded us about, about this. Repent, repent, repent. What is in our life, yours and me, and mine, that still, need, that still needs repentance? What is in our lives that Mary prays for us to change? What is in our journey that's still an obstacle for us to come closer to the Lord? What is in our life that keeps us away from Him? What do we need to repent from? And the third lesson here in Fatima, Mary beautifully taught, is the warning about the what's going to happen in the world if the world doesn't repent. She warned the world that unless we change the curse of our history, unless we live differently, unless we embrace different uh, values, what did she say here? The communism will take over. That's what she said, huh? The communism will take over. Back in 1917, that was on the beginning of communism, huh? In 1917, the Western world had nothing to do with communism. But never warned, unless you repent, the communism will take over. What is communism, communism in the basic things? Some of the ones, of course, there's tons of elements to it, but some of the ones said, the most basic thing of the communism is this. You take your trust from God and put your trust in government. It's the basic thing about communism. Huh? I don't trust God. I trust my government. Look where we are today as the also Western world. Hasn't communism spread everywhere? There's more people, even the states. There's more people today who trust government more than they trust God. This beautiful inscription of the buildings in the States, huh? in, or even what she warned about huh, has become reality. So right here in Fatima, where Mary appeared quite a few times, we pray for ourselves today as, a, as, as her spiritual children. We pray today for her prayers for us. We ask today for her prayers for us. We ask us to embrace the lessons she has taught us. We ask her to help us to be humble, to be faithful, to be courageous. We ask her today, may we indeed embrace prayer, may prayer deepen our spiritual journeys. We ask her today to help us to repent from whatever makes us still weak. And above all, we ask her to transform with God's grace our world. May we move back from trusting the government, whatever government, to trust in God, God again. May we as a country 
once again live this little beautiful scent that our forefathers embraced. May we truly, not just words, but truly trust the Lord again. May he become once again the foundation on which we're building our lives, our families, our futures, and our country. For this we pray. Amen. Amen. And we ask Mary to pray for these intentions as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. And please stand. And now with trust, we approach the Lord with our prayers and petitions. We pray for Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. May they be true shepherds for us. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our government officials. May they put their trust in God and lead us in righteous ways. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us here that are on pilgrimage May this be a fruitful pilgrimage. Open our hearts to Jesus and Mary. And may we go home bringing that peace and love and joy back to all our friends and family. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are not able to be with us on this pilgrimage, all our friends and loved ones. May we go back to them, bringing them what we bring, what we receive here on this pilgrimage. For this we pray. We pray for all our dearly departed. May their souls be with God in heaven in all the fruits of the mighty kingdom. For this we pray. Our loving Father, we ask you to embrace our prayers, those we have spoken out loud and those we have kept in silence of our hearts. We ask you to answer them according to your holy will. We make this prayer as always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice you to Him. To the praise and glory of His name. For the good and good of all His holy church. 
O oh Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your son and our spiritual mother, our Lady of Fatima. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may advance towards eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, but especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Lady of Fatima, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things, and you extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. O Lord, bring your church to perfect faith and charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, religions, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. 
make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we come to eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in the communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Lord taught us that God is indeed our loving Father, so trusting in his words, we turn to God and we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
They do have a very strict rules here, so they ask to receive in your hands, not on your tongue. Hmm? Would you go to the other? Because I started with him with time, so I cannot get it now. He's unbelievable. But I, met, I, found, I get to the, on the tank somebody and he can kick me out. I can't, I can't continue to get coming. Can you imagine? That's oh, just unbelievable. Yeah, I know. Could you bring this? I'll, I'll
Eucharistic Jesus present in our hearts. Lord, help us to embrace the lessons you taught us through your mother Mary. May we be humble. May we, through humility, open the gates to all beautiful virtues you have prepared for us. May we trust you. May we live our fear, our yes to you. And may we live our lives courageously, giving witness to you. Lord, help us to embrace prayer. May prayer keep our relationship with you be alive and beautiful. May we heed your voice, your invitation to repentance. And may we put our trust not in things or other people, but in you. Help us to live in the way so we can truly become more and more like you. Amen. And let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, Lord, that having received your sin, your son, born of the tender virgin, and the sacramental signs, we may profess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth with trust in God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us and praying together. I have to make a comment about this Holy Communion. It's heartbreaking to see that the church is more afraid in the world. Huh? Unbelievable. Hopefully we wake up as a church, you know. Uh, we should not get, never give in to fear. So hopefully this place also will not give to fear, but courageously trust the Lord. Huh? May he bless us in many ways. Continue to heal our world. May we awaken and see clearly. And may the Lord have wonderful blessings for us. So see you in a few moments. <laughs>